Now the first problem with act utilitarians that we're going to be discussing, and this is a problem that people sometimes say shows that act utilitarianism is too demanding. That is, it requires that you do things that are not morally obligatory, that are not morally required. And this kind of example is going to is going to explain the problem with that utilitarianism has dealing with what we call super erogatory actions. Super erogatory actions are actions that go above and beyond the call of duty. Heroic actions, we sometimes call them. And now we can imagine um, that it's the day of the ethics final. Let's say it's in December. Juan, a student in the ethics class, takes a quick walk on the beach our campus is right on the beach after lunch in the cafeteria he sees a small boat overturned about 50 yards from the beach and notices that a small child has fallen out of the boat begin and beginning to drown okay so we we see that it's kind of cold pretty cold outside the water is cold at this point not freezing cold but um and our if you're in the New York metropolitan area you know that there's a, an annual event at the beginning of January 1st where people go to the beach, right? The next beach down from us in Brooklyn, Coney Island, and the Polar Bear Club takes a dip in the ocean. So it's cold, but people don't die from it. But here's the question. What should Juan do? And let's think of a couple of alternatives. One alternative is you might say the heroic alternative, jump in his, risk his life, jump into the water, swim out, and rescue the child. We're assuming that Juan is a good swimmer, capable, he's, he's a certified lifeguard on the beach, so it's not an issue whether he can do it. Another one would be for him to run back to the cafeteria and to try to find somebody on the security force to have them, you know, the professionals take care of it. Another thing he could do, he notices that next to the lifeguard stand, which obviously in December is unattended, I guess it's obvious to anybody who's been on a beach um, in the cold weather, walk over there, he finds this life preserver and kind of throws it out, makes an attempt to throw it out. Nobody can throw one, you know, 50, feet, 50 yards, uh, and hopes that for a miracle that the kid will somehow grab onto that and be drawn to shore. And finally, another alternative let's think about is that he could just, you know, turn his head and ignore what went on, you know, and go take his ethics final. So now the question is, according to act utilitarianism, remember, act utilitarianism claims, Mill's doctrine, that is, claims that an action's right if and only if, no alternative that's available to the agent at the time has a higher utility. In other words, it either has the highest utility or it's tied for the highest utility. So the question is, what should one do in this case? And the first thing we should notice is, I think, looking at the alternatives that we have, it looks like one might be required. The right thing for one to do is to at least run back to the cafeteria and try to find a member of the campus security staff and get them to try to solve the problem. But it maybe it would even be it's a super erogatory action, action, an action above and beyond the call of moral duty for him to actually jump in the water in a freezing cold water when he's had this, this final coming up and swim out there, you know, risking to some extent probably risking his life to rescue the child. But those seem to be the two in contention. But notice, we would say at a bare minimum, to meet his moral duty, he ought to at least go alert the security staff who is paid to do this, who's paid and trained to do this kind of stuff. Okay, now let's see, what does act utilitarianism say that he should do in this case?